Okay, so welcome back to our last session. Uh, now we're going to listen to Savio Ribas from UFOPI, and he's going to speak on factorization, elasticities, and zero sum sequence. Please, Savio. Okay, thank you, Ramon. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, I would like to thank to the, the organizers for the, uh, the invitation. Uh, yeah, this conference is being very nice. Uh, I actually don't work anymore with analytic number theory, but I use it to work with this during my master's a long time ago. Uh, and after that, I moved on to, to additive combinatorics and, uh, yeah, combinatorial and additive number theory. And, uh, yeah, I, I started to work with uh, zero-sum problems. And in, in Brazil, there are some uh, spread groups uh, that works with zero-sum problems. And then, uh, but n none of them uh, work, works with factorizations. And I knew that there, there's a, a nice relation among this, these things. And then uh, last year, I, I visited uh, the University of Graz, and I learned a, a little bit about factorizations, and I started to work with this. So I'm going to present factorizations, elasticities, and zero-sum se sequence. And at, at the end, I will, if time allows me, I will present some uh, analytical problems coming from here. Okay? But I don't know very much the state of art, art of these problems. OK, so let's get started. Uh, yeah. The, First uh, result about factorization is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic that says that every integer, uh, non-zero integer, can be uniquely represented as a product of prime numbers up to the order of the factors and multiplication by plus or minus one. Uh, but in, in other, other environments, we can miss the 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 un the Unicity, uniqueness of the factorization. Uh, for example, the most common uh, example is this. Here in the set, uh, the number six uh, is time two times three, or is this product here, and they are not associated, right? They are uh, really different factorizations. But in other, th there are other, other uh, nice uh, environments that it also occurs. For example, uh, in the Hilbert monoid. Hilbert monoid is the natural numbers congruent to one model four. So this, is, this set is uh, closed to, to product, for the product. And here, this number, 693, can be uh, written like this or like this. And f of course, 21 is not a prime element, but uh, it's, it's a kind of uh, re irreducible inside the Hilbert monoid because 21 is 3 times 7, but 7 and three are not elements of this monoid. So uh, these factorizations are really different. And here we have the Meyerson monoid, which the number, uh, the no natural number is congruent to four modulo six. Here we also have uh, uh, distinct factorizations, for example, 1,000 can be written as 10 to the 3, or 250 times 4. And the situation here gets worse because we have three factors here and two factors here. Okay. So here in the previous example, uh, the, the number of factors at least remains the same. But 
not in the Meyerson monoid. Uh, okay, but what is a monoid? First, uh, I have to, to talk about semigroup. A semigroup is a set uh, equipped with uh, an associated binary operation, which will be multiplicative in this presentation. Uh, a sem semigroup Y is cancellative if you can cancel the elements, like AB equals AC implies that B equals C, and in the other side also. Uh, a monoid for us will be a cancellative semigroup with identity one. And a monoid is commutative if the elements commute. And every, every monoid will be commutative in this presentation. And of course, what I called monoid, uh, Hilbert monoid and Meyerson monoid are examples of monoids. Also the non-zero integers and this set here. Uh, we will say that x divides y in, in a monoid. We use this notation here. Uh, if y can be written as x times z for some z in the, in the monoid. And one element is a unit in the monoid if this element divides one. And we use this notation here, x star, for the set of non-units. And if x divides y and y divides x, then they are associated. This is equivalent to say that x is equal to one unit times y. And uh, one element which is not uh, a unit is prime if when it divides a product, then it divides some of the factors. And it will be called atom. Uh, or irre irreducible when x equals y times z and uh, either y or z is a unit in, in the monad. So it's known that every prime is, is an atom, but the converse is not true uh, in general. For example, in the Hilbert monoid, uh, 9 is an atom but nine, 9 divides this product, but doesn't divide any of the factors, so 9 is not a prime. Okay. And when primes are not the same as atoms, uh, we'll be interested in factorizations in atoms, not in primes. OK. Uh, okay. Uh, we denote by, by, by A of X, the set of at atoms of X. And one monoid will be atomic if every element with uh, non-unit can be written as a finite product of, the, of atoms. And yeah, these monoids are atomic. But there is a simple example of non-atomic uh, monoid, which is this one. Uh, it's easy to prove that the, the, the polynomial X is not a uh, product of, of atoms, finite product of atoms here inside this, this set. And from now on, we'll be dealing only with uh, atomic monoids. And a monoid will be called uh, factorial if, uh, if you have uh, uniqueness on the factorization. So if the factorization is unique. Uh, and this, ah, okay. And if we can write uh, x equals a product of atoms, for example, a product of k atoms, then k is a factorization length of x. Okay. And we say that x is half factorial uh, if every element uh, has only one factorization length. So uh, uh, the, the factorization can be different, but all of them are the same, are the same length. Okay. 
of course, if the factorization is unique, then uh, every factorization will be of the same of the same length. So x factorial implies x uh, has factorial. The fundamental theorem of arithmetic says that uh, the integers uh, is factorial. It's a factorial monoid. But we have seen that uh, the Hilbert and uh, Meyerson monoids are not uh, factorial. Actually, we have seen that M is not half factorial because we found uh, the one element with two factorizations of diff distinct length. And it's easy to, to find the, the, the atoms in the Hilbert monoids. The atoms in the Hilbert monoids are the primes in the natural numbers, which are uh, congruent to one, model four, or the product of two, uh, two atoms, two primes, which are uh, congruent to three, mod model four. So if we can factor completely one number in, in in the integers, over the integers, and then we can join the, the join pairs, the primes which are uh, congruent to three model four. So uh, every factorization will be of the same length. So uh, the Hilbert monoid is half factorial. Uh, okay, some notations. Uh, let K be an algebraic number field. O K is its ring of integers, and G of K is its ideal class group. Uh, it's known that the, the ring of integers is factorial, if and only if uh, it's uh, principal ideal domain, if and only if the class group is trivial. And Carlitz showed that uh, this OK is uh, half factorial, if and only if the class group has at most two elements. And it's known also that uh, here in, in this example, uh, this, this is an example of half factorial monoid. So yeah, every factorization here will be at least of the same length. And if uh, x is not a, a unit, then we, we define the set of lengths of x. Uh, is, this is the set of all uh, factorization lengths of x. And if the, the element is a unit, uh, then we define this trivially. And the system of sets of lengths of a monoid will be the, the, the set formed by the, the factorization lengths of the, the elements of the monoid. And the union of sets of lengths containing K is uh, this set here. This set means the following. Uh, if, if we have a, f a factorization of one element of length k, then which, which more uh, lengths we can achieve? Uh, for example, if, if we can achieve uh, another factorization with length l, then l belongs to this set here. So we can see uh, how much can compress the, the factorization or elast uh, yeah, makes it, it elastic. Right. Uh, there are some, uh, some observations, some remarks. Uh, the union of sets of lengths containing K, uh, if you sum with some set here, uh, with the union of, of sets of lengths containing L, then this is uh, contained 
in the union of sets of lengths containing k plus l. But in general, uh, the converse is not true. Yeah, another trivial uh, property. Because if you have a factorization of length k and of length l, then we have a factorization of length l and of length k. Okay. And one belongs to the, the union of sets of lengths if and only if uh, k equals one. And this is equivalent to, to say that the, the element is actually a, a, a an atom. Oh, well. We define uh, lambda k. This is the minimum of this set of, of this set here. So how much we can compress the factorization, and whole k is the supremum of the set. This whole k is ca called uh, k elasticity. In general, for a for a set subset of natural numbers, uh, we define. Uh, the elastic, elasticity of the set as the supremum divided by the minimum and the elasticity of a monoid will be the supremum of all uh, elasticities of the elements uh, the elements of the system of sets of links. So it's, it's not hard to prove that the elasticity uh, is equal to the supremum, so we can write the things, um, yeah, write whole of x uh, depending on on the kth elasticity. And yeah, it's trivial also an um, observation here that x is half factorial if and only if the f, every factorization has the same length, so the minimum is equal to the maximum, and then the, the elasticity is one. And the elasticity also can be inf infinity, because, for example, we can take this, this set here, the multiples of six, and in the set, uh, six to the n is a factorization of length n, and the same element can be write, written in this way. And six only divides each factor here only once. So these factors here are each one uh, uh, an atom. So we have a factorization of the same element, a factorization of length uh, n and of length two. So uh, the, the elasticity is at least n over two for every n. Then it's inf infinity. And it's possible to show that the, the elasticity of the Meyerson monoid is two. So uh, we can almost uh, get twice the length of the factorizations uh, in the mon Meyerson monoid. OK. okay. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about uh, zero sum problems and then relate factorizations with uh, zero sum problems. So let G be an additive abelian group. Uh, a sequence of over G, uh, it's, it's a, it means finitely many terms of G. We disregard, the order is disregarded and we allow repetition. So the sequence can be written in this way, finitely many terms, and we can group the terms, uh, the equal terms, and write in this way. So the exponent here means uh, multiplicity of the element in the sequence. The length of, of the sequence will be k, and it's also denoted by uh, yeah, in this way. Or this is the sum of the multiplicities of the elements. And sequence may be considered uh, as elements of the free abelian monoid Fg with basis G. So sequence 
can be written uh, uniquely in this way. And a subsequence will be a divisor of the of the sequence inside the 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 free abelian monoid Fg, or equivalently, uh, the the multiplicity of the elements of every element in T uh, is at most the the multiplicity of the element, the same element in S. And we say that S is zero sum if the sum of the terms is zero in the group. And we say that S is minimal zero sum if the sequence uh, is zero sum, but no proper subsequence is zero sum. For example, uh, yeah, let Zn be the cycle group of order n. Uh, then the the sequence formed by the, the term one, repeated n times, this is a minimal zero sum sequence of length n. And another example over uh, Z5, this sequence here is zero sum because uh, yeah, three plus one plus one is zero and plus zero plus two plus three, so zero. Uh, this is a zero sum sequence, but it's not minimal. But uh, S has three uh, zero, minimal zero sum subsequence. Uh, yeah, one of them is two, two, three. The other is one repeated two times, and three, and the other is the, the zero. Okay. Uh, and S can be the co the composite uh, like T1, uh, T2, and T3. And this is a decomposition into minimal zero sum subsequences. And the Davenport constant of, of the group G is the supremum uh, of, of the length of every minimal zero sum sequence. And this is a an old fact that uh, the Davenport constant of a uh, uh, class group uh, is the largest integer such that the, if you take the, the, the ideal generated by A and we write this as a product of uh, prime ideals, so the length here, the maximum length here is the Davenport constant. Okay? And if J, G, G is finite, then the Davenport constant is bounded by the order of the group. There is an equality for cyclic groups. And the fundamental theorem of uh, abelian groups, uh, uh, finite abelian groups, we can write G in this form, where the N1 divides N2, that divides uh, R here is the rank, and the last term, NR, is the exponent of the group. Uh, if you write the group in this form, so we can define uh, this constant which depends only on, on the entrance here, N1, N2, N2, NR. And this constant here is an, a lower bound for the Davenport constant. It's, this is easy to prove. Uh, there is an equality here for groups of rank two, one or two, and for P, P, uh, P groups, a billion P groups. But, uh, there are many groups with rank uh, at least four, which, uh, for which the, this inequality here does not hold. Uh, actually, hold, but it, it, this is strict. The equality do, doesn't hold. And the conjecture here is that uh, the equality occurs for rank three and also for groups of this form where every Entrance here, N1 is equal to N2 is equal to NR. So, yeah, this is a conjecture. 
Uh, now, um, I'm going to talk about crew monoids. And crew monoids as, are basically the, the environment where we can uh, join uh, can and study uh, factorizations in terms of uh, zero-sum problems. So a nomomorphism uh, from a monoid to this set here, we, uh, I will call this set D, but this is a, a free abelian monoid with basis P, where P is, is something. Uh, this this homomorphism is a device of theory if uh, this homomorphism pr preserves divisibility. Uh, it means that A divides B here in X is equivalent to phi of A divides phi of B here in D. Okay. Uh, and a monoid screw it, if it has a device of theory. And um, yeah, th there are many equivalent uh, definitions for crew monoids. Uh, one of them is uh, X is crew if and only if X is completely integrally closed and satisfies the ACC in the divis divisorial ideals. And yeah, I just take the, the definition, uh, the easier definition for me in this case. But this, if, if you define it in this way, we can see many, many, uh, many examples of uh, crew monoids. Yeah. So one homomorphism theta from X to a monoid B uh, is called trans transfer homomorphism if theta is surjective up to units, and if theta of A is equal to capital B times capital C, uh, implies that there is this B and C in, in X, such that uh, theta of B uh, is associated to capital B, and theta of C is associated to capital C, and A is equals uh, B times C. So we can uh, transfer uh, factorizations from B to X, basically. So factorization in B is the same as factorization in, A, in X. And the idea is the following. Uh, if X and B uh, are, are crew monoids with B simpler than, A, than, than X in some sense, then theta allows us to transfer factorization pro problems from X to B and to, to come back. So we can, maybe we can uh, <laughs> search for a, a monoid which is easier to, to deal with and uh, work in this simpler, uh, simpler, uh, yeah, in the simpler case. Uh, for our group G, we write B of G is the the sequence, the, is the set of zero sum sequence. Uh, this is a monoid, and B of G is crew if and only if G is a billion. And this is the reason the, the inclusion uh, preserves the divisibility. And just a parenthesis here, when I started working with uh, zero-sum problems, I, I was working with mm, uh, non-abelian non groups. So now I'm working with factorizations, so I have to, to take my papers and throw away <laughs> uh, because it's useless here because for, for factorizations, of course. For factorizations, uh, the non-abelian groups is useless because of this result here. Okay. <laughs> then, uh, yeah, 
we write a of g is, uh, we just drop the, the, the letter b here, just for simplify the notation. Uh, so this is the set of atoms uh, of this monoid, and the set of atoms, an atom is actually a minimal zero sum uh, sequence over, over g. And if d is an integrally closed Noetherian domain, then if we remove the zero, this is a Krugmanoid. So we have many examples coming from here, right? Many examples of Krugmanoids. In particular, the <laughs> ring of integers of some algebraic number field, uh, this is Krug. So how to transfer factorization problems uh, between proof monoids? First, uh, I will define this Q of H. The, this is the co quotient group of a monoid. And the class group is, the class group of, of a monoid X is this quotient here group quotient here. And if X is a crew monoid with class group G and the divisor theory phi, then we consider this diagram. And if we start here in X, so we can apply uh, phi, go through here, and then apply uh, this, this homomorphism here. Uh, but yeah, the homomorphism, uh, the, the theta here is the, the, the restriction of uh, theta tilde to, to x. So if you start in x and apply this, we go through the monoid of zero sum sequence. So instead of go through here, we go directly to here. And if a, a belongs to X, then that attitude of A uh, is a zero sum sequence over G. And yeah, this implies that uh, the set of lengths of A is the same set of lengths of theta of A. And the system of sets of lengths is equal. They are equal. And the simple B that we can take uh, is the monoid of zero sum subsequence, zero sum subsequence uh, over the group G. And this is uh, finite abelian in several cases. Okay, uh, yeah, there is a realization fact that says that for every finite abelian group G, there exists Dedekind domain uh, with class group uh, with class group G, and so sets of lengths in crew monoids can be studied uh, through the monoid of zero sum uh, sequence over G. So this connects uh, the the. the zero sum sequence and factorization. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to talk about some problems and I will start uh, with analytical problems. So remember the, this is the minimum, uh, yeah, this is the minimum of the union of sets of lengths containing K in this monoid, we just drop the, the B here, just to simplify the notations, and for every other uh, function here, we just drop the, the B, okay. And let L uh, be an ordered set, then the set of distance of L is the set of uh, that consecutive distance, right? 
A2 min minus A1, A3 minus A2, and so on. And for a monoid X, the set of distance of the X is the union of the set of distance uh, of L, where L uh, runs on the, the system of sets of link. So, yeah, there is a trivial fact here. The, this is empty if and only if L has a, at most one element. And L is an arithmetic progression if and only if the set of distance is, uh, has at most one element. Okay. And an almost arithmetic progression is like, uh, we have arithmetic progression in the middle and we put some terms in the beginning and some terms in the end. So we put at most M, M terms in the beginning and M terms in, in the end. And we, uh, yeah, this is an, uh, an almost arithmetic progression. So in the middle, it's, a, it's a, an arithmetic progression. And yeah, there is a result here that says, that this result is called structure theory, theorem for union of sets of lengths. And it says that uh, if the, set of difference here uh, is finite and non-empty, and D is the minimum of the set, then under some uh, mild hypothesis, uh, there exists, uh, basically, this set here is an almost arithmetic progression. So there is a, uh, a beginning and an end, and yeah, the set will be, the, the middle part is an arithmetic progression. And yeah, so this set here is well structured. And there is, it holds the, this limit also. We can put uh, this guy here in terms of the, the elastic. And if G, G is finite abelian and has at least three elements, then this almost arithmetic progression is actually an arithmetic progression of common difference one. So this is an interval, interval between the, the minimum and the maximum, right? And yeah, some other analytical, prob analytical problems. <coughs> Let K be a, an extension of the rationals. Uh, and K will be the norm function. Suppose that the, the class group has at least three elements and define this function here. This is the number of uh, ideals, uh, non-trivial ideals, for which the norm is bounded by X and the length of the, the element here, L of A, uh, has at most uh, K, is, is at most K. So A has at most uh, factorizations of, has at most K factorizations. So is using some Taubarian theorem, it follows that this function here is, is asymptotic to this quotient for some A. Uh, I just put A here because uh, it's hard to explain. Uh, yeah, but this A is, is, is well defined. Okay. The, this is a constant that depends on the, on the group, on the class group. And there is a problem here to, to improve the error term. Uh, there is another result, not the analytical result, which <coughs> this one. It says basically that almost every, uh, almost every set of length is an arithmetic progression. Okay. And now, uh, 
there are another other problems involving uh, the 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 set here. Uh, remember that uh, this set, if G is a, a finite group, finite abelian group, then this set here is an interval. So if this set, if the, the class group has at most three, at most true, true elements, then this is only one element. The, the UK is only one, only a singleton. Uh, if G has infin uh, infinity <laughs> elements, then every finite uh, subset is a set of lengths of uh, the monoid of zero sum, zero -sum sequence. Okay. And this set here is shown to be this set here. Okay. And the case, so almost, uh, the, these are trivial cases. Okay, the second is not so trivial, but it's known. So the thing is, uh, when the class group has at least three, three elements, and it's finite. So we have an interval here, and we can put the, the, the lower term in terms of the uh, elasticity, the cave elasticity. So yes, there is a result claiming this. And actually, we can put lambda in terms of whole and in terms of the Davenport constant of this, this group. And uh, if K, if the, this, if this uh, K here is even, then the, pro the, uh, the problem here is solved. We can put uh, whole in terms of D, the Davenport constant. So everything will be in terms of the Davenport constant. Oh, there's this term. Uh, the proof is, is easy. I'm going to talk about the proof here. Uh, let S be a, an atom of maximum length. So it, by definition, the, the S, S will have uh, Davenport constant of G elements. And we denote by minus X is equal to the sequence formed by the terms of S, uh, the opposite of the terms of S. So S. So minus G1, minus G2, until this one. Of course, we have that zero is not an element, uh, is not a term of S, and this is also an atom, right? Because it has uh, zero sum, but no proper subsequence has zero sum. So we can write this sequence here, s to the k minus s to the k. Uh, here, this is a product of two k atoms. And here is the product of k times the Davenport constant atoms. So the same element, the same sequence is written, in, uh, is factorized as a product of 2k atoms and k times the Davenport constant atoms. And of course, the k times uh, the Davenport constant is the maximum possible. So yeah, we have a factorization of one element of uh, length 2k, and the same element has a factorization of length k times the Davenport constant. OK, so it remains the, uh, the case odd. So uh, with a similar argument here, uh, it's possible to, to show that this inequality here. There is a lower bound and an upper bound. And if G is cyclic, uh, then the, the lower bound is attained for every K. And there is a conjecture that 
says that if G is finite and non-cyclic, non then eventually uh, the upper bound is attained. Okay. And yeah, if, if the upper bound is attained for some K, then for every larger uh, value, uh, the upper bound is also attained. Okay. So the thing is, we just need to prove this for some k, right? Uh, yeah, it's proven that this conjecture holds true for this group, provided the Davenport constant is this constant here, we defined in the beginning. And yeah, uh, I think my my only uh, contribution for this area so far uh, is this group here. I studied uh, the row of this group, and I proved that this conjecture, the conjecture, this conjecture uh, holds for this group. Of course, this is not a paper yet, because this is a very small group, and uh, I couldn't do the the case uh, Z22, uh, Z6. So it would be interesting to to put a 2N here, but not even the case 6 here uh, is done. So the, the proof is pretty easy because, well, the theorem says that if X is a crew monoid with finite collect class group uh, G equals to this group here, then the conjecture, conjecture holds true for, for K equals one, K star equals one. So the proof is easy in the sense that uh, it's enough to, to consider uh, X equals to the uh, zero sum sequence over G. Uh, the Davenport constant of this group is known. So this is a group of uh, rank three, but uh, the Davenport constant uh, is equal to the day star. So the proof is the following. Uh, we just take three sec zero sum sequence, which are mi minimal, and uh, yeah, we uh, pairwise uh, join the, the terms here. Uh, and the idea is that no, no elements remain. For example, we join these three elements here with these three. So this uh, forms uh, three zero-sum sequence, subsequence uh, of length two, each one. So oh, this element here we can join with these two. This one we join with this, this, uh, this, and this. So, uh, all, of, all of these uh, sequences are uh, minimal zero sum, uh, z minimal zero sum sequence. Uh, all of them have length six, and uh, U1, U2, and U3, it, this element here has a factorization in atoms of length two. Uh, so this proves that whole three is equal to, is equal to nine, which is the upper bound. Okay. Uh, but the thing is, if you change this for, for a six, so the sequence here are greater, uh, and it's difficult to find this kind of uh, arrangement. Okay. And yeah, there is another uh, problem, which is called char characterization problem, that says the following, actually for small groups, the, for example, for Z1 and Z2, the system of sets of lengths 
are equal for Z3 and Z2 squared. It's also equal, but uh, there is a conjecture that uh, if they, they are equal, if L of G is equal to L of uh, G prime, then is it true that G is isomorphic to G prime? So it has been proved for some class of groups, but not for everyone. So yeah, I think uh, that's it. Thank you.